Hey, William Gilmore here for the ScreenwritersJourney.com. It is day 178 of the journey. And uh, took another 10 pages into the rewrites workshop tonight. And it went really well. Uh, the call for action was answered. Uh, we sort of left off last week with uh, Shep sneaking into the trailer to rescue his buddies from Raydell. And uh, that's where we picked up. So this sort of rising tension. And uh, it actually worked very well. Uh, it was a new scene. I wasn't quite sure how it was going to be received or how it would play, and I have to say that from the reading, it felt pretty good. Uh, I felt good about it, uh, definitely. Uh, we had this whole sort of rising tension as Raydell is easing down the hallway with uh, Tyler. He's got his arm around Tyler's neck, got a gun to his head, he's looking in doorways, looking for Shep because he hears a noise and he thinks he's in the trailer. And Shep is in the trailer. Uh, he's sneaking around the kitchen with his gun, trying to, to get a drop on Raydell. Uh, Grady's breaking uh, out of his binds, his bind, bindings, breaking out of his bindings uh, in the living room, uh, and then the big confrontation between all four of them: uh, tackling, fighting, fists, guns going off, people jumping out of windows. Uh, it all worked really well. Uh, it really answered the question of action that people were starting to have and then the big whammy when uh, Angel kills Grady's kids that are being held hostage at his house and uh, that kind of took everybody by surprise and in a good way uh, it's tough when you're killing off family members particularly children that usually doesn't go well uh, it was a nice twist uh, gave a lot of impetus to characters and uh that uh, I was wondering how that was going to play. Would they react really badly to that or would they accept it? And they accepted it. Um, it's hard to say they felt good about it, but uh, it definitely, they were caught up in the action of it all. And uh, it definitely made sense to them uh, when Grady commits suicide when he finds out that his family has been killed. And uh, so I, I hate to feel so happy about that, but uh, it, did, it did play well and I felt really good. So. That was great, and then of course uh, a new bit uh, was revealed where uh, Tyler leaves in the car, leaving Shep alone. In the previous version, uh, Shep and Grady, uh, Shep and Tyler took off in the car and tried to make a run for it, and then there was a whole scene that happened in the hotel room. And Tyler circles back, and uh, it worked, but it was it was kind of labored to make things happen. And, and this is just much more on the spot. It's instant. It keeps the action going. There is no sort of lull as we get to the hotel room. Uh, so this was nice. And that will lead into our new car chase scene, which uh, we just got into tonight. Uh, the, uh, the pursuing car has rammed the back of Tyler's car. And the big car chase scene will happen now. And that's where we cut it off. So we'll pick that up next week. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, finish reading the screenplay next week and or next next Thursday and um, see what uh, what the overall feel is from the readers and the other writers in the group uh, I haven't heard back on the feedback or on the, the scripts that I sent out uh, earlier this week I sent them to a number of people I figure some of them probably won't get back to me at all uh, some of them will um, so I sent out more than I normally would knowing that you know, people are busy and it takes a lot of time and even if they do get to it they may not get to it for a while and I need feedback sooner so uh, I sent it out to a number of people to see uh, if I can get some some answers to the questions that I have and some of those questions that I have let's go over some of those uh, let's see uh, da, 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 da. Uh, several of my concerns are will uh, the readers see Ray Dell as the protagonist or Shep that was one of my uh, problems that I discovered uh, several weeks back, is that it really makes more sense to think of Raydell as the protagonist. He does go through a major change. Uh, he's the one who sort of sets everything in action. Um, he's the one with the big overriding goal. Uh, he's a bad guy, and that makes it tough for people to see him as a protagonist because we tend to think of protagonist as hero, not necessarily the case. Uh, he's really not even an anti-hero. He's, he's just a bad guy. That's different, um, and we'll keep hearing that uh, you know, Hollywood wants to see something different. This may be too different. Uh, people don't, you can't really root for Adele. 
so that's an issue. So that's why we have Shep, who's a good guy, um, but there's been an issue with, with Shep. Um, people don't always see him as the good guy, or as a good guy. Uh, there's been uh, some hint from people that he's not very likable. I, I'm not quite sure why, um, because he doesn't do anything bad, um, other than kill his brother at the end, but everybody wants Tyler to die, so I don't see that that's necessarily a, a bad thing. So it's going to be interesting to see what feedback we get on that. Um, is there enough character separation between Shep and Grady? Specifically, is Shep the stronger character? That was one of my issues back in October uh, that came up in the readings at Tuesdays at 9, is that Grady seemed to be overshadowing Shep somewhat. He was a much more active character. He was the military guy. He's one who knew how to do things. And then when Shep got shot, Grady really took over the story because he had to handle things and rescue Shep. And it, you got your hero being rescued and out of commission because he's got a bullet wound in his shoulder. He's kind of out of the story. So there was a lot of rewriting to fix that. Uh, Shep is definitely much more active than Grady is now. But Grady's the one with the family, the one with some big stakes involved here. So he may still overshadow Shep somewhat. So that's something to, to see what happens. Uh, is there too much ink on the page? And that's something that um, there's been a big question in some of the screenwriting groups uh, online uh, about action. And I've seen some articles about that recently. Uh, and there seems to be a big push to make things as spare as possible when it comes to the action description on the page. Uh, less ink is better. Uh, but if you're writing for a reader and you really want to paint a picture and get them involved in the action, I, my personal feeling is to write a little more. Uh, and I've been trying to follow uh, Dave Trotier's uh, description examples in the Screenwriter's Bible and following his protocols. And it reads really fast. So I, I don't think that's an issue. It can certainly be trimmed a little bit and you know, cleaned up. I still have to make a pass on that, uh, to take care of all those things. But... Is it enough? I don't know. Uh, or is it too much? I don't know. Uh, I saw an article uh, the other night that was showing how to write action description for an action movie, which this is, and it was so spare and so simplistic that you really didn't get a sense of the dynamics of a scene and, and how things were happening. You know, just Bob shoots, Bob runs. And it's like, it, it just it didn't engage me enough. So this, I think, adds a little more oomph to it. Um, and it certainly helps page count-wise. Uh, it's a little more accurate representation of what will happen on the screen, I think. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, some people may like it. Some people may hate it. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, does the uh, second act slow down too much? That was one of the issues I talked about uh, one of the earlier blogs, that um, people were getting a little antsy for some action. Uh, and all things are definitely ramping up and moving forward. Did it slow things down too much? And it's still, the big question for me is in the first half of the second act. I think once we get past the midpoint, things move pretty rapidly. But is, does it slow down too much in that se first half of the second act? Is there not enough forward progression? Are the characters not being active enough to find solutions to their problems in that early part? Once we get to that midpoint, uh, it really kicks off. Um, but I have... Ray Dell, particularly if he's the protagonist, he kind of is hiding in his um, uh, house, waiting for information from the sheriff before he can really proceed. And that may be an issue. It may take too long for him to uh, to get underway. Uh, and finally, are the characters likable? Yeah, I already mentioned that. Uh, overall, the characters seem unlikable to to readers uh, in earlier workshops. I don't seem to be having that issue right now uh, in the rewrites group. Um, we did not start at the beginning of the screenplay, which picked up later, but they don't seem to be having an issue. They seem to, to like the characters or are liking, disliking the characters that they don't like, uh, someone that you'd love to hate, Tyler. Um, and that was an issue early on, is that people just said there really was nobody they, they identified with Shep is supposed to be the one that you should identify with, 
And then certainly Grady is, is a likable guy. He's a family man trying to protect his family. And I just didn't understand why people didn't latch on to them. So that's going to be a big question to see if, if that gets answered in a positive way uh, in this feedback. So that's really what I'm waiting on. And uh, next week uh, we should get the last few pages out at the uh, workshop and uh, see what the final verdict is uh, from my fellow writers. Anyway, until then, I'm William Gilmore for ScreenWritersJourney.com. Please keep writing on your own, and I will see you next time right here on the blog.